Welcome to this gathering of special education session. So good to see y'all. I request all the attendees to keep your videos on throughout the session for our speaker to have an interactive session. I am Shri Khebde and I've been part of Sober Toastmasters Club for more than a year. Ralph C. Smedley in March 24, 1905 started a movement called Toastmasters. The reason behind this movement was that he figured that people have a tough time raising a toast and speaking publicly. In order to help them fight their fear of public speaking, Toastmaster Club was initiated. Today, we have numerous clubs across the globe, 154 countries to be precise, one of which is Sober Toastmasters Club. In Sober Toastmasters Club, we are here to share our knowledge system when it comes to conducting a Toastmasters meeting. And in order to help with that, Sober Toastmasters Club has started a community outreach program to share our knowledge in the form of series of awesome sessions. Evaluation, table topic, TMOD, and TAGL. In order to execute our vision, we initiated Project University Pushpagiri. To give a small context of University Pushpagiri, it used to be an oasis of knowledge in ancient India, where people would come from across the globe and study from the best professors and turn themselves into better humans. To draw parallels, Sobo Toastmasters Club has the best Toastmasters who have been Toastmasters for 10 to 20 years. And they have amazing experience within Toastmasters fraternity, who, are, who all are here to help us learn. After having a successful first educational session, we have gathered here for the second session of tackling the table topic fear. After the presentation, we will have a question answer session all participants are requested to send the questions in the main chat box. We shall address them in the end. And today, to share his experience on table topics, we have someone who is a chartered accountant, a management accountant by qualification, CFO by profession, Toastmaster, public speaker, Maxwell Leadership Certified Speaker, trainer and coach, and a blogger by passion. He's a member of two clubs, ICAB Toastmasters and St. Tamil Toastmasters. He has participated in various district level competitions. He has delivered workshops on leadership corporates to corporates and to CA chapters across the world. He regularly conducts workshop on leadership and communication for young minds. In 2018, he had the opportunity to speak in front of 2,500 Maxwell certified trainers in Orlando. He believes in continuously learning and upgrading himself and finds interesting things to learn all the time. We are proud to have distinguished Toastmaster Minakshi Sundaraman in Sobo, who is joining us all the way from Bahrain. With a huge round of applause, welcome distinguished Toastmaster Minakshi Sundaram. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Toastmaster for the wonderful introduction. Let me just share my screen. My screen visible? It's visible. <clears throat> Thank you again, uh, Toastmaster Shri, for the introduction and also for the opportunity to share whatever I have gained uh, with, with all the masters uh, from whom I learned and whatever I could uh, pick up. Thank you for the opportunity. The topic uh, that, that was given to me is tackling table topic terror. Now, I thought the word terror actually brings whether you are terrorized or not, it still instills your fear, instills a fear in your mind. And table topic is not something that you should be worried about or feared about. So I thought I will cut that and probably change it as terrific table topics. I mean, as it was masters or humans, we are all terrific. So every table topic we attempt is also terrific. So let's call it as terrific table topics. I want to start with uh, this particular uh, para. I want you all to just read it and let me know how many F that, that you are able to locate in this. And probably three, uh, uh, 15 seconds. And if you can get a reply in the chat box. 
and you can let me know what is the average number you are getting. If you have any responses, you can let me know now. Uh, people have put three, six, and four. Three, six, and four. Yeah, that's uh, normal. It's actually six. That's right. And why people uh, you know, find less number of ifs? It's because the word of, OF, our mind refuses to read them. You know, it's obvious. So we ignore it. Our mind ignores it, actually. Now, what is this has to do with uh, our table topics? Well, every table topic that is given to you has got a comment inside it. If you're not observing it, if you're not listening to it keenly, like how we miss the F from the off, we miss the thread and we'll find it difficult to comment on a table topic. So it's all in that observation. That's where it starts. And if you're missing out, don't worry. Because in this alone, 50%, normally 50% of the people miss out the F in off. So you don't have to worry that you know, you're doing something miserable. Nothing to worry about like that. I thought I'll start with this slide on table topics, which it's it's is a common thing about uh, table topics. Is like, I'm also guilty of this. Like when a topic is given, we start with whatever we have in our mind and we expect somewhere down the line we'll be able to wing it off, isn't it? But that's not actually table topics. That, that's probably for practice in the beginning, but as we go along, we should be able to master it. And there are techniques that we can use. What do you want to do? This is not only for table topics. This is a question for every public speaking assignment that you, that you get. Are you expressing to impress? Now, this is a very interesting question put across to me. 20 years back when I attended a personality development workshop, what is your intention? Are you trying to impress someone or you are trying to express yourself? Now, when you are trying to, when you are expressing to impress someone, in all probability that you may fumble. But when you are expressing to express yourself, there is a less chance that you will fumble. And you will appear more confident. There'll be more conviction in whatever you're saying when you're expressing to express your thoughts. So when you go on stage, remember, you are there to express, to express and not to impress. What is not table topics? This is where I thought I would start. It's not a q &A. There is no need to answer a question. That's not what a table topics are for. It's not a test on your knowledge. No one is testing you on your knowledge or even personality. It's a comment, it's a, it's a topic given to you for you to comment, for you to practice your public speaking skills. That's about it. Then what is actually a TT? In my opinion, it's an opportunity to practice impromptu speaking skills. In, table, in, in Toastmasters, if you look at, I would rate table topic as the most important thing that one can get. Of course, uh, prepared speeches helps you to organize your thought process, but table topics is what is going to help you to tackle everyday situation. By, by improving your impromptu speaking skills, you are going to face so many situations in your life, every day, work or personal life. This is going to help you. So it's an opportunity to practice impromptu speaking skills to have a conversation with captive audience. I will talk about it a bit later as to why I say conversation. Share your thoughts. Where else you will get a safe environment than Toastmasters to share your thoughts. So go ahead and tell a story. It's important that we all learn to tell a story because the stories, our life is nothing but stories. And how we tell our story is how people will look at us. So it's an opportunity to practice that. What not to do in table topics? Don't dive when a topic is given to you because you don't know what is in the other side of it. I remember a topic given to me, probably in the, in the early part of my Toastmastering career. What is the difference between living and existing? 
I was so pumped up. I said, oh, living. It's actually living and existing. It's existing. You know, and then I got stuck. So don't, don't die. Wait. Take a pause. Assemble your thoughts. You can take about 15 seconds to organize your thoughts and then start your commentary. Second thing that you should not do in table topic is confusing. You start with particular uh, direction and then suddenly you realize that there is another way of doing it and you turn and then at the end of the day, it's like a spaghetti. It happened to me in district level uh, contest. The topic was, what is the message you want to give to the world? And I was so pumped up. I said, the message I want to give is my name is Meenakshi, but I'm not a girl. The audience was in splits. For those who are wondering why, because Meenakshi is the name generally given to girls. But then I said, that's not the message I want to give. And I went on to uh, talk about something else, confusing myself, confuse the audience. So don't do that. Take a thread and just follow it. The challenges, two challenges in table topics. One is what to say, other is how to say. What to say is more nuanced. It needs more time. I will touch upon it a bit later in the presentation but I will cover on how to say the techniques that you can follow in handling a table topic question. The first one I want to cover is problem, solution, benefit. So you define a problem, why it is a problem, and then what did you do to overcome the problem, the solution? And then because of that, what happened to you in your life? That's the benefit. So that's one way of uh, handling the table topic. So for example, if the topic given to you is if we learn from mistakes, why are we afraid to make mistakes? See, we learn from mistakes, no doubt about it, but whenever you commit a mistake, how people look at us, the failure that hurt us very bad and because of which we don't want to even try again. It happened to me when I was a child, I was uh, put up on the stage on a fancy dress competition, you just say four lines. I miserably failed. It took me 20 years to come back to stage. But this time I realized making the mistake is what is going to help me to learn and grow. And I made the mistake again and again. And today I'm standing in front of you and speaking to you. So that's the way you can handle this. So problem, solution, benefit. The next one is a famous one, which has been used across normally. This is the format that people generally use. It's called prep. It's point, response, example, point. So topic is given to you. You say, what is your point? Why is that your point? Why is that? So you, you, the response is, why, why, why is that you are choosing that? And then you give an example for it, an experience or someone else's experience, whatever it is, and then come back to the point and conclude it. So what is worse, failing or never trying? Similar story. Never trying is what is worse because you don't learn anything out of it. Failing, you learn something, you can progress in life. So you give experience, you, you go and support with an experience and then conclude with your point again. So that, that's prep actually. That's another way of handling topic. And this is the most famous model generally people follow. The other technique that we can use is called pendulum technique where you talk about the advantages, disadvantages of two different options. And this cannot be used for every topic, but this can be used for specific topics. For example, the topic, topic given to you says like, is social media a boon or a bane? Now here, you can talk about what are all the advantages? What are all the disadvantages? And then you weigh between the two and then say, what do you choose? In your opinion, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages, so it's a boon. Or if you think it's the other way around, you choose that. So that's, that's a pendulum technique. The other technique that you can use, other model that you can follow in table topics is past, present, future. Where you, you share about what happened in the past, when you come to the present, you say what, what is happening right now and what do you expect to happen in future? This again is a technique that you cannot use for every topic, but there are specific topics where this technique will fit exactly. Like for example, going with social media again, how has social media impacted our society? That is, that's a question that's given to you. 
and you can go back. And for example, if, if I say, I will say in my childhood, I was more inclined in going out and playing with my friends. So more physical activity was there. And then one day TV came and we were all tied up in front of the TV, sitting and watching TV. And our parents were very upset. This TV is ruining the kids. It's completely spoiling them. They're not studying. That was the past. Today, he saved his social media. That's actually ruining our child's, our child's life. They're not studying anything. They are completely glued on to the mobile phone, looking at the you know, feeds. But again, TV also changed our life in a positive way. It gave a lot of information. The news was available to us immediately. And social media has got advantages. There is so many things that you can learn. So many advancements that is happening in different fields are available to you in your fingertip. Now, tomorrow, maybe something else, maybe AI becomes a bigger force and that's going to have an impact in our society. At the end of the day, the impact these things can have is positive or negative is up to us. You know, something like that. So you take a past, you take a present and then you go to the future and then you conclude your... The next technique that you can use, it's called zoom in and zoom out. Where a topic is given to you and you have an experience to speak about. So you go to the story, you dwell deep into that story. But for concluding, to give the message, you will come back, look at a bigger picture, and then you will say whether you want to take a direction this way or the other way. If I had to give an example for this, for a topic like if you had a chance to go back to your, you know, go back in time and change one thing in your life, what would you do? Now I was in college. And I can tell you, when I was in college, I was falling in love with every beautiful girl I was meeting. And guess what? I went and proposed to them. And they were so happy to say no. Then one day, I was sitting in a saloon having a haircut. There was an uncle sitting next to me. He looked at me and said, this is how you have a haircut? You're studying in college? I said, say, so what? No girl will look at you like this. I was like, should I accept or not? Then I told him, doesn't matter. This is how I am. So maybe if I had a different haircut, probably some girl would have accepted. But you know what? Few years later, with whatever haircut I had, someone accepted me for who I am. So given a chance, will I go back and change my hairstyle? No. I would live with whatever I was. You know, you zoom in, Take an experience, but zoom out and give your comment. This is another technique that you can use. It's what, when, it's like in, story, it's in, in a story, you give who is involved, what happened, when, why, where. So use all these questions to address a topic. For example, the topic given is uh, what stands between you and happiness. So you can say, you know, in childhood, it was your mother because you want to play, but she wasn't allowing you to play. She wanted you to study. Or maybe in, uh, in, the, in the office environment, it is your boss who is giving you more work. So you can, you can go and talk about what happened, when it happened, why it happened, how it happened, you know, all, those, all those questions. So that's one way of addressing a topic. But again, these are all different, you know, different topic uh, needs, different types of techniques. But generally in a, a table topic, I would say prep is what is used more. Problem solution benefit or prep, both can be applied. Generally, this is what fits for most of the topics. But for some topics, you can choose between a pendulum method or zoom in, zoom out. This also can be helpful to you. These are the techniques that you can adopt. Now, what to say? What to say is more nuanced. Because what to say comes out for every type of topic based on what you have in your mind, what is the experience you have faced, whatever knowledge that you possess. People say that read more, all those things. But I would say, whatever topic is given to you, try to personalize the topic. Try to bring a story out of your personal life, out of someone else's life in your life. For example, one of the table topics, I used my grandfather's story. And in one of the topics, I used uh, my teacher. He gave a, a lesson to us, and that, that, that was a lesson that I, I carried for forever. So you can pick up from different people's life also, you know, your friend's experience or now that everyone is happy with pet, so I just put pet also. So you can, you can choose one of it and personalize the topic. That way you will feel comfortable to speak and audience will be comfortable to listen to. 
make it conversational. I said it's, it's an opportunity to have a conversation with the captive audience. Make it conversational because every time you have a conversation with the audience, they are going to come into your speech. For example, if you say, let us take a moment, what's going to happen? Everyone in the audience is going to pause and take the moment to listen to you. When you say, can you imagine? Everyone in the audience is going to imagine along with you. Maybe there is a different imagination, but the act of imagination is going to happen. Similarly, remember your last trip with your family is going to evoke everyone's memories about their trip. So that, that way they're going to connect with you. So make it conversational. This is one question that people ask. Do you need to address the topic? Is it compulsory that you have to address the topic? Because sometimes you don't know what to say. Now I thought I will use a clip from a humorous speech by uh, Postmaster Mohammed Alisa from Saudi Arabia. It's a humorous speech, but there is a component about uh, table topics that comes in the middle. So I thought I will use that clip. Yeah, this is where I have a challenge. Uh, Minashi, yeah. If you play yeah. it now, it should work. Should work? No, not yet. Should I close and uh, get back? Uh, yes, the screen is frozen right now for me. So I'll stop share and then bring it back probably. Sure, sure. I think that should work. Well, in the same situation. Can you start playing? Apologies, just uh, bear with me. Is it clear now? Yes, we can hear now. Folks, for those of us who can't hear, kindly read it there. It's, it's still on the screen.
Oh, that's a humorous piece, but then the point is that even if you don't know much about the topic, you can still talk about the topic because it's an opportunity to speak and practice. So yes, even if you don't address the topic directly, you can still make an impact. That's the opportunity there. I just want to give you some tips that you should remember. One, don't dive into the topic, pause, assemble your thoughts, then address. Then get to the point as early as possible because the more you delay in getting to the point, you will confuse and you will confuse the audience also. It's a speech, so opening body conclusion, body language, vocal variety. I'm not going to touch upon that because if you are naturally speaking with your experience, your body language and vocal variety will be natural. So don't worry about it. Express to express, not to impress. So with these tips, the terror will become terrific. So now I have a sample. Uh, Topic, which I want to give it to. We have a Toastmaster here waiting. So I want to give a sample topic to Toastmaster uh, Raghupati. DTM Raghu, if you are available, can you please? Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Minas, sir. Thank you for joining me here. The topic is uh, Toastmaster Raghu. What are you most grateful for? What are you most grateful for, Toastmaster Raghu? Able topic, Master. My dear Toastmasters and most welcome guests, good day. It's true that uh, if life throws Lemon set us, we make lemonade. But what if it throws stones and bricks? Stones in the form of heartache, failures, and hard times in life. Let us ask a singer or an artist or any successful person or a sports person, what is the greatest inspiration for them? Definitely it will be the hard times that they face. Because during that time, the ability to care, love, break, and recover is what makes life worth living. And I am grateful for my hard times that I have faced in life. We aren't actually molded by any nice time, good times, because they barely teach any lesson to us in life. It's only during the hard time that the struggles that we face helps to define the wonderfulness in us because we do not want to land up in that situation again and we want to discover the great life that lies ahead beyond that challenge i can relate to this to my life because each time i have hit the wall i have seen new avenues opening up i was extremely bad in public speaking i could not take up leadership role like many of us i could not pick up the mic and speak in front of four people. I used to sweat in a cold room and it was extremely difficult for me because I used to struggle searching for words, stammer. But today I'm so grateful for those moments, hard moments, because it opened up the wonderful world of Toastmasters for me. And today I take up leadership roles. I speak in front of four people without any fear and I reflect on those wonderful lessons that I learned during the hard times and I feel extremely grateful for the hard moments I have faced, challenges that I have faced in life. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Raghu. In fact, uh, it's a wonderful uh, example for using the prep method, you know, where the point, response, example and point. So he made a point what is that he is grateful for in his life and then he explained why he, he has picked up that that particular you no know, the hard moments is what he is grateful for and why he explained with uh, once one he explained with the you know the, the the great sports persons and their lives and then he gave a personal example of uh, his own life and concluded saying that you know this is what i am grateful for 
So this is actually one way of addressing and prep is a, the method that you should all generally apply for every type of topic. And thank you, Prasma Shalagu, for the wonderful uh, comment. And uh, thank you for joining us and giving us, giving us this wonderful uh, table topic. Uh, that brings us to the end of my presentation. Um, Prasma uh, we can open up for questions. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Vinakshi. This was an amazing, amazing presentation, something that I cannot think of. It was just very impactful. Uh, the floor is open for questions. Guys, please type in your questions. The questions will be displayed to us. Zoom Master, do we have? OK. So DTM Minakshi, here's your first question. What is a template that one can follow to tackle a table topic, especially when one is new and anxious while speaking? The question is from DTM Shokat. Okay, um, I can tell from my experience. Um, I, I can again. I have, I have actually listened to the great uh, first mothers who were, who were before me, and I learned from them. One thing that, uh, as I said, express to express, that, that's something which will help us to remove the anxiety first. Because the moment you go there, you are anxious because you, are, you, are, you have a fear that you, know, you may fail. So the moment you remove that, you know, you're, you're not there to impress anyone, but you're going to express yourself, then you're opening up for learning. So it's not that you, you're going to do better in the first few attempts, but trying to link the topic to a personal experience will help you to kind of uh, you know, calm down and learn better. This is my experience. Thank you so much. So the next question is from Toastmaster Aarti. Should we go ahead with our first thought when we hear a topic or wait and think for a better reply? That's a tricky one in a sense because if, if there is only one thought that comes to you, what will you do then? So, but but I would say the first thought is not the one that you should jump on because I have, I have experienced whenever I jumped with the first thought, which looked very attractive, middle halfway through or maybe even sometimes within the 20 seconds, you realize that you are stuck. So wait and assemble, assemble thoughts because you have the 15 seconds. So you can wait for uh, some more thoughts to get some more clarity. Right, right. Very well said. So the next question is, uh, can we use somebody else's story when answering a table topic? This is from Toastmaster Jatin. Of course, yes. You can use anyone's story. It doesn't matter. As long as you are able to relate to it, you, you can say this happened to my friend and this is what uh, happened to him and this is what I learned out of it because you're going to personalize it, to his experience, but learning is yours. And then you are giving it to the audience. So this is my learning and this is what I want to give it to you. Yes, you can do that actually. Perfect. Toastmaster Hetal asks, how can we improve on the spot thinking when we hear a topic to tackle nervousness and stage fright? Uh, see, on the spot thinking, you have to practice again. It's not going to happen overnight. It's everything is practice. As I think it's, it's Mark Twain who said that uh, I need to prepare for three days to deliver an impromptu speech. So uh, if you want to develop impromptu speaking, you need to practice. So you have to read a lot. And whenever you come across of any information or any, any, any story or anything that you like, observe it and see what you are learning out of it and how it is impacting you. Because anything that impacts you is what you can give to the audience in an impactful way. So anything that you read across and it has made a mark in your mind, how it has impacted, observe that and store it in your mind. You can use it in your speech. So it's a practice. Amazing, amazing. So the next question is from Toastmaster Alifia. How does one use a prop in table topic? That's impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot decide that I'm going to use a prop and go to a table topic. Correct. Sometimes it may happen. See, sometimes uh, it can actually fall into you, right? You want to use a prop, you go there. Like, for example, mobile. 
you want to use the mobile phone sometimes the topic uh, can be relevant and you can use it but it, it depends on the topic and the situation and what is running in your mind so if you ask me a prop you can use but on the spot whatever comes to you which is relevant for the topic and the story yes correct uh, joining to the question to the answer of on the spot thinking what if we do not have a story in our mind that is the question from toastmaster jisha so what do we do in that situation i would actually uh, again take a leaf out of uh, my mentor dtm shaukar because sometimes you don't get a story it's not that no for every topic you start and the story is going to come to you and you are going to start it no you will not get actually so i this is what i think i i told uh, toastmaster sri also sometimes you have to be like such an animal you no know, you go there and you are not able to actually read the ball properly but you have to wait so you have to maneuver around the topic and trying to link with few thoughts and then suddenly you will be able to link with the story this again comes with practice so you have to keep doing it and probably you will master it over a bit of time correct but adding on adding on to your sachin tendulkar analogy what if certain questions are just unplayable and we are you know dumbfounded you know so how do we tackle that embarrassment that's the question of toastmaster bhakti <laughs> that's why again see how you tackle the embarrassment is because there again you're not trying to impress see the, you will feel embarrassed only when you are trying to impress people moment you are going there as with a, with a clear mind of learning you are not bothered about who is there in the audience isn't it your your failure becomes hurtful to you only because it, it appears like you know in others image you are feeling like you know you have been taken down but moment you remove that impressing i don't want to impress anyone i want to express i want to learn i i, I think you can do you can fail many times and still learn and then go forward very well said so the next question is from toastmaster hamza is it a good idea to go against the topic while presenting a table topic see it, it depends again because if, if you are in a contest generally what happens is those who are going against has a better chance of winning provided you are able to substantiate with a good story or with, with a good uh, backup just for the sake of going against you can't just go and uh, you know then you will be fumble or again resin mat makes sense so going against will definitely help you as long as you have a conviction to speak so if if you are in debate for example you have been debating then you will be able to speak for or against at any point of time you your mind will start preparing it so if you are uh, bent of mind towards that then i would say yes go against there is a fair chance of making a good impact true uh, so as you previously mentioned that we need to do a lot of reading and we need to absorb a lot of things but then there are times that we just don't know how to prepare for an impromptu speech because it's all impromptu suddenly something comes up and you just don't know so how can i prepare for such table topic that's toastmaster rupesh's question okay so there are uh if if you if you are like for a, for for a contest you know it's a different thing because for a contest you have a set of uh, like how you prepare for exam you can uh, take some 20 25 topics and then prepare uh, your response for each topic you can prepare that way also but for real impromptu speaking it happens over a period of time with every experience you learn every observation that you make in your life it's it's stored there you don't know when it is going to come of use to you like sometimes simple idea it comes at a time when you realize that how we have been so foolish till till today such a simple thing we not thought about in the past because a time has to come for that idea which is in your mind to come out so some observation you made in your childhood you don't know when it is going to be useful to you suddenly it comes to you but that happens over a period of time so again you have to keep doing it it's it's a way of polishing yourself right right so just previously when toastmaster bhakti had asked about how to handle the embarrassment i want to know i mean toastmaster loki wants to know did you have any embarrassing moments and if you did how did you tackle those okay my first table topic uh, contest was was very i'll say entertaining for others i spoke for 15 seconds 
and stood there blank for another 30 seconds. Okay. But when I came down, it, I was not really worried about it because it's an experience for me. You know, I, I teach to young, uh, for the Gavaliers, I teach and I tell them this two minutes of table, uh, table topics is your time. Even if you're not able to speak anything, just stand there. Moment you are able to do that without speaking anything, you're able to stand there and face that embarrassment. You're going to overcome anything in your life. And that's how I see this. Right. I mean, this happens to the best of us. But Toastmaster mm -hmm. Clifford wants to know if after you listen to the topic, you definitely go blank. And then once you're standing right there, what to do then? <laughs> <laughs> See, the simple way is, uh, which, which generally people tell, don't do that. But for, for a beginners, for a beginners, the easy way to start preparing your response is by repeating the topic. For, for as, you, as you keep practicing, you know, you should not repeat the, the topic. But in the beginning, you have to, you are, you are preparing yourself. You know, your, your mind has to get attuned to the, the table topic session. The impromptu speaking, uh, you know, skill has to get developed. So that time, I would recommend well, you can you can actually repeat the topic just to get some ideas. Correct, correct, correct. So during your presentation, there was this one slide of the entire spaghetti thing happening. So Toastmaster Gaurav Chaudhary wants to know how to avoid digression. Okay, uh, maybe I'm the wrong person to say because I went ahead and did that in a DTAC, you know, in the district level competition. <laughs> but I learned from there actually. So now I make it, keep it simple and straight. You know, you pick up a one, one thought you want to go with. Uh, once you get a clarity, clarity, go with that. Don't try to go forward. But again, it's, it's tempting sometimes. You know, you suddenly one idea comes and you feel like, oh, this looks better than what I have been speaking now. So I want to do that. But you have to overcome temptation. And again, happens with experience. Right, right, right. So just uh, previously, you mentioned that we need to read about stuff and then absorb it and all of that. But Toastmaster Sumeran here wants to know what are the resources we need to look for? Are there any right resources that you would recommend? There is nothing called right or wrong, actually. See, you have to, you have to keep reading. Whatever you are interested in, you, you keep reading. In fact, I would recommend that... Uh, uh, read whatever is possible. Don't restrict yourself to what your area of, areas of interest. See, I, I have a collection of books which are into completely, you know, I have books on cosmos. I, I have books on uh, uh, RNA. I mean, I don't understand anything out of it, but I still read it. Because you don't know, somewhere something will click and you, know, you will learn something. So, you have to force yourself to read. Okay, makes sense. Uh, here's an interesting question from Toastmaster Zulfikar. Uh, this is, I think this echoes with everyone uh, who is married, apparently. Table topics is akin to entering the house and your wife asking you a simple question. Where were you? How do you prepare for a table topic like that? I would prefer to go blank there. <laughs> and keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> or try to divert it in a different way, if it is possible. I mean, see, you can prepare for any kind of situation, but uh, uh, facing wife is, is a completely altogether a different, uh, uh, I'll say, different world. Right. <laughs> well, speaking from experience, I guess, uh, Toastmaster Anushka wants to know, not just the house part, like not just answering your wife, but how in real life is uh, table topic useful to us? Uh, in real life, actual table topic is useful to us in many ways. I would, I can tell from my experience because see what happens even sometimes. I, I, though I'm, in, I, I'm handling finance, but I go for customer calls also. So what happens is that uh, when you, when you, when you face a customer situation, you're able to see something in the customer's office, and you're able to speak on that. Like you see a book, and you, you talk about that book. So you're able to connect with the customer. You know. The conversation happens from there. So the situation becomes easier for you to handle. So table topics actually is going to help you to get these kind of you know, small, small leads where you're not, expect, you're not expecting anything, but suddenly you see something where you can touch upon and get a connection. This is one, one experience 
for me actually and with, with even staff sometimes you know, situation can be very tough sometimes hostile for example and tabletop can help you to handle the situation in a more calm and uh, you know composed manner because you are you're trying to see which uh, line you can take and take the situation under your control that's what you're learning in tabletop perfect so toastmaster kalpesh's question is during during the video that you played about the entire procrastination there are times when someone is not that witty to answer such tough questions so what what do you suggest when a person has zero knowledge about topic how does that person go ahead with it see i would uh, this is something which i generally tell to the gavelias also because so they are all you know new and they don't know what to say so i tell them that you know the topic probably have no idea about the topic but if you can pick up one word from the topic and relate to something else completely and speak on it see at the end of the day a table topic session is again a chance for you to practice the public speaking skills so it may not be relevant at that point of time but still you are polishing your speaking skills you are polishing the way you are going to handle a situation so that that is a learning there so i would say one word at least definitely one word you can you know pick up and relate pick up the word and speak on that with your experience or you know some something that you can relate to right right so can you can you elaborate a little bit more because that's the question of toastmaster gavin he is asking how can we get into an example immediately as soon as you you just said that you know you take a word and then start can you can you give an example to us uh okay i i remember one topic you know where, where um, i don't remember the topic now but i remember the response so because with the response i am trying to you know uh, assemble the topic the the, the response i gave was i i used the alice in wonderland uh, you know if, if you don't know where you uh, where you want to go you can take any road you want i think the topic was uh, whether you are uh, you know you become the you know you, you become a top of top person in a company or a, a, a position you are prepared and then you go to the person or you go to the person and then you prepare yourself this is the topic and i i was not sure what i am going to speak on that so i picked up the alice wonderland uh, this thing and then suddenly i realized that i can pick up example from someone else's life that is almost after uh, uh, one minute i realized okay i don't have experience because i am you know i was young at the time even now i am young okay <laughs> but <laughs> then i picked up experience from someone else and then said this person became a cfo at that point of time so he became cfo not because you know uh, he because he is already a cfo material that's why he's been given the opportunity that's been he's been you know put in that position so you have to be ready before the position comes to you and that's how i took the topic so sometimes you you may not get a story immediately so you have to go around with words try and you know get some kind of uh, an idea somewhere in this but sometimes it may not happen also but that's an experience fair enough we have one last question from toastmaster jayesh what should i keep in mind to prepare the questions for members if i am going to play the role of table topic master okay if you are table topic master the only recommendation that uh, what has been given to me by my elders which i always give to everyone is set a topic that is easy for the speaker to speak because as i said table topics is not a test on a knowledge or a personality it is an opportunity for people to practice speaking skills so take a topic which is simple and easy and allows anyone to speak something about perfect i guess we have answered all the questions and that should sum up everything that we have been doing here today thank you so much dtm minakshi this was a fabulous evening because of you you spared your time and you came here and you enlightened us with your beautiful presentation and amazing question answer session thank you so much maybe please have a round of applause for dtm minakshi sundaram thank you thank you for the opportunity and uh, i'm grateful for the opportunity and for all the listeners for being patiently listening to me and asking questions of course with that That's the real table topic yes yes sorry sir please continue <laughs>
no i'm saying that the questions are the real table topics no? <laughs> true true especially the wife one was really interesting <laughs> with that being said may i please uh, request by the way you yes, know my wife so i have to be very careful in whatever i'm going to say here <laughs> <laughs> so zoom master may we please acknowledge uh, our speaker today with a certificate uh dtm minakshi this is a small token of appreciation for your efforts for enlightening us maybe please also uh, highlight spotlight mr minakshi dtm minakshi he is spotlight okay maybe have the certificate of appreciation for our timer jatin display thank you so much uh, maybe also have a certificate for the zoom master if we have one thank you so much thank you so much so everyone who is attending our session guys your feedback is absolutely important to us i request the zoom master to please launch a poll requesting our speakers our presenters and everyone to give us their feedback thank you so much in the meanwhile i request the zoom master to display our social media handle the slide of our social media handle zoom master guys please take a note of what sobo is doing through these social media handles we have been working really hard to educate the toastmasters fraternity and we shall be keep we shall be doing this over and over again as long as you guys keep attending us keep looking at us keep inspiring us let's meet on the 18th of march with an amazing session again by toastmaster dtm abbas akbar on tmod how to tackle tmod how to do that stuff we'll see you guys in the next session next saturday until then the project pushpagiri project university pushpagiri will keep on flourishing and keep educating you guys the session should now be concluded